Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update with Chris Lewis and Sam. And Sam is still out. She'll be back, I believe, next week. And uh, with us today is Precious Addie Miller. You guys love her and know her and always asking about her. So here she is again, part two of our new series. I I don't think she was on part one, but she's here for part two. And I don't know if there's going to be a part three. Maybe. Let's see how much we get through uh, to it today. All right. Um, Before we begin, guys, why don't we say hello to the LHB family, Lewis? I'd like to say um, hello to everyone that's watching for the first time and those who uh, have followed us before. Um, we do this. We, we want people to understand what the word says uh, on certain topics. And this one um, is angels, which it's very confusing to people at times. Um, you know, it's like the old saying that, you know, you, you die, you go to heavens and you get your wings. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So we want you to understand what they are. I thought you were done. Sister Addie. Okay. Oh, yes, it's great to be here. And I, I thank you for the accolades, Chris, about uh, everybody uh, liking me and everything. But I always tell people it's because you don't live with me. <laughs> and you might change your mind. So anyway, but I love being here. I love being here. Thank you so much for, for allowing me to take part. And we are going to clarify, just like your first part one clarified about because there's so many misconceptions about mm-hmm. angels and the angelic realm because they get it from all kind of other pagan religions and, and false teachings and all that kind of stuff and not from God's word. So we pray today that we will take care of some of those misconceptions about the angelic realm and that we will tell you some of the differences. And FYI, these are the actual, the real ancient aliens. Amen. Yes, we are on that, actually. (laughs) Um, Guys, if you are new to our channel, you're seeing us for the first time. Well, we welcome you. We thank you for joining us. And if you know, if you like what you see or hear, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. Don't forget to like and share and also comment on the video as that helps us uh, in our circulation process on YouTube. So we want more people to see our content. Um, okay, so Angels, the Invisible Warriors, Part 2. A quick recap. Last uh, On the first program we did on this, we went over the different types of holy angels, right? Watchers, archangel, the only, the only one archangel, his name is Michael, um, chief princes, uh, seraphims, cherubims, um, of course, princes, principalities, power, rulers, some of the titles for these angels. And those titles could also be for the fallen angels as well. All right. And we we went over what they're not either. Like, you know, like Sister Addy brought up the fact that like Hollywood, for instance, they have uh, these angels with chicken wings on and they have the halo around their head, that little circle. Right. That little Frisbee thing. Uh, none of that. None of that's accurate. None of that's biblically accurate. Um, it, and, you know, the this a lot of this comes from the Catholic Church and their teachings and how it seeped in the into the Hollywood and so forth and so on. So Satan is using that image or the cherubs, the chubby cherubs you see on Valentine's day, you know, with the bow and arrow, they look like babies and they got smaller chicken wings, you know, but still, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not angels. A real angel would terrify you if you saw one yes. and, not, and not terrify you because they're ugly or monster, you know, like they're looking like monsters. It's because they're so awesome in their, in their nature. They're so <clears throat> awesome. You would either, Fall to your knees and worship one, as John uh, the Revelator did twice. He had to be corrected for it. Or you would just faint, like the Roman soldiers, when you know, they saw an angel roll away the stone. Like These are beings that are, you don't see on a day-to-day basis, okay? <laughs> so when you see one, you know that these are uh, beings not to be messed with, okay? But thankfully, we have two-thirds of the angels on our side. Amen. You know, we have uh, one of the toughest angels out there leading that, and that's the Archangel Michael. He's the protector of Israel at this uh, particular moment. 
and he's the one that's going to find Satan in the future and cast him into the bottomless pit. They have history, those two, okay? And uh, Michael's going to have the final say when the Lord gives him permission to do it, okay? Um, now, today, we're going to be talking about fallen angels, fallen angels. And um, the reason we want to jump into fallen angels, you know, is because we want, we don't want to be ignorant of Satan's devices, like the Bible says. We, we don't want to be ignorant of his devices. We want to know what these individuals are up to. How do they uh, war against the people of God and God himself? They know they can't take God down directly, but they will try to hurt God by taking his children down, so forth and so on. And uh, so we're going to look into that. But um, I want to start off by reading Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And this is Jesus speaking. And he said unto them, his disciples, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, right? Now, this is not talking about a physical fall yet, because that doesn't happen until Revelation 12. This is talking about falling from his position that he once had. He still has access to the third heaven. He goes up there to give an account to God. He goes up there to accuse the brethren, right? Yeah. And uh, you guys can, can attest to the fact that, you know, sometimes you know, in your prayer life, all of a sudden, old sins start to flood your mind. Like, oh, you're guilty of this. You're guilty of that. How dare you? You're not worthy. Right. Uh, Lewis? Uh, it's, it's, um, it's been going on since the very beginning. Uh, part of the problem is uh, Satan uh, is jealous of what we have. Okay. Um, he was created perfect. Okay. Uh, until iniquity was found in him, according to the word. And, in his mind, he doesn't understand why we have preference uh, in God's eyes over over him, being that he is so powerful. Um, and like you said, he cannot uh, take on God, uh, but he can take his children away. And those of us, uh, you know, the three of us here that, that have children, um, you know, when someone touches one of our children, that, that is the worst thing that can happen. Uh, and, and that's what he does uh, uh, to, to God. He wants to take away his children. Um, but at the end, we have to know, and you mentioned, Chris, that Michael will find Satan. And he's telling you that he is not that powerful when it's compared to, I mean, he's powerful, but when God gives Michael the order to bind him, uh, he won't be able to resist the power of Michael. And it's biblical. It'll be there at the end. We will be able to see all of this. And Sister Addie. Okay, yes. And, uh, you know, what I always do, I always tell people, if you, if you want to understand something, you have to understand the leadership, the, the tactics, how someone or something works. Okay, so if we study, we go back and study, which is, I haven't done an in-depth study of, of Lucifer slash Satan slash all of his other names. Uh, but the, what I have learned is fascinating because it tells you so much about the angelic realm just studying Lucifer, just studying Satan. So if you look at him, and of course, you, you know, you, we could go through all kinds of scriptures. You have, uh, you have, uh, uh, what is it? Ezekiel talks a lot about it. Was it thir thirty-eight? Is that? And, am I right? Twenty-eight. Uh, starting at 28, verse 12. 28. There you go. And, and then, of course, the I wills in yeah. Isaiah 14, which is fascinating. So if you look at that, you can tell, you understand. First of all, you have to understand that Satan is not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. And he is not omnipotent. He isn't a created being. and But you still have to understand how he works. Okay. Pride is what caught him, what tripped him up. So if you start looking at his little demons, you know, the, the, uh, the little imps that follow him, they do his bidding for him because he cannot be many places at one time. So if you start right. studying all of that, it's fascinating. But it also makes you understand, even though we can't see the spiritual realm, it kind of makes you help you to understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. And I think that clarifies a lot of what's happening uh, on this planet you know, in the temporal world. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of people who talk about that. There's this ongoing debate about, I want y'all to fill me in on this because I haven't come, I don't know what the answer is, but they say, oh, the, the angels were created before the six day creation, seven days creation. 
uh, or they were created during the six and seventh days of creation. So uh, maybe y'all can clarify that for me. Well, I know there's two there's two different uh, factions yeah. on two different thoughts. I'm right. I'm with Dave Hunt, who who believes that the angels were there prior. Because what Genesis is describing is. is this physical universe. It's not talking about the angelic or no, no. visible no. world that was already there. And remember, the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the yeah. earth. So that means they were already there witnessing the creation exactly. of the world. Yeah. They, exactly. they should have been existing for eons before our uh, physical creation was made. Because, you know, they were there before the physical universe. They witnessed it. They witnessed yeah. Adam. They witnessed Eve. They witnessed all these things. And Satan had to have rebelled a long time before uh, that creation because he was already in the garden wanting to tempt Eve when she was there. So he fell way before uh, that time. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's, yeah, that's, that's, where I, that's where I fall too, Chris, right there. And listen, Paul in Colossians in 116, Colossians 116, he says, by him, Jesus, all things in heaven and earth were created. Things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. So I, I, I agree with you and Brother Dave. I think they were here at the creation moment. They were already here and they were rejoicing over what God had created. Yeah, yeah. They, they had their own time in, in, in eons past or when they were created. But they existed, fellowshiped among themselves way before God announced to them, hey, I'm making a new creation and I'm putting a new being there. You know, and I, I believe this is what uh, Lewis was alluding to here, where Satan, I believe, in his pride, got jealous. You know, think about this. Angels are not made in the image of God. We are. That You know, we kind of like, you know, nonchalantly let it go over our heads. But if you meditate on that, that's a, an amazing a privilege. You know, uh, in, in the book of Revelation, Jesus says that, you know, uh, just as he sits in his father's throne, so we will sit next to him in his throne. Angels do not have the privilege of sitting next to the Godhead. They could stand in front of the presence of, of the thrones, but they don't have thrones to sit on next to the Godhead, but we do. And this is not saying how great we are. It's saying how great he is, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we don't deserve any of this at all as, as human beings. We, we are, you know, we've committed high treason against the God of the universe. So we don't deserve anything good from him. It's, this is just showing us how good he is and how merciful he is and how, you know, how loving and caring he is for people that betrayed him, but repented, you know? So, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, but Lucifer, Lucifer is very cunning. He is very powerful. He didn't lose any of his his powers and abilities, he just lost his position. So the Bible says, and we're going to read this. First of all, let me start with Isaiah 14, and then you guys can go ahead and comment on it. It says, Isaiah 14, starting at verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they that speak, oh, wait, all they shall speak and say unto thee, art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I mean, that, that right there, the word of God leaves no stone unturned. There's no guesswork in to who Lucifer is and where these demons came from, right, uh, Brother Lewis? Uh, yes, and it tells you just where he was and how far, like it says, um, he has fallen. His pride, um, and, and, you know, we go back to um, Ezekiel, which is, you know, he was an anointed cherub. It's, it's the only uh, angel that has been called anointing, 
in anointed. Uh, and he was there, like all the angels, like you said, at the creation. They witnessed all of this. Um, and then he just thought, you know, why, why should I bow down to lowly humans? To And we're, we're very fragile. And, and when you said, you know, we would be afraid of angels, their power, their authority is beyond anything that we can comprehend. So when they stand in our sight, um, we, we would, you know, we shrivel up. It's, it's, it's just the way it is. Um, and there is a spiritual uh, realm out there, like Sister Addie was talking about, and God protects us by not letting us see it. And we go back to Daniel when uh, uh, the angel Gabriel came to him and, and, and told him, you know, I was kept 21 days uh, from coming here. Uh, and then Michael had to come and help me out. And the, and the thing is that Gabriel is a messenger angel. But after he finished talking to uh, Daniel, he told Daniel, I have to go back and continue the fight. Yeah. And which which means there is that's what we call real spiritual warfare. Right. Yeah. It's not that, you know, casting out demons out of furniture kind of thing, like the word of faith uh, teachers <laughs> are teaching you know? or hitting somebody over the head with a Bible like Barb Larson or sprinkling right. holy water like the Catholic Church. But Addy, you mentioned uh, uh, Lucifer's heart before. And it yes. says here, and I believe he has a heart condition with the five eye wills, yes. right? He says, he will, he, he says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of, con of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the mo most high. Now, you talk about arrogance. This is the epitome yes. of arrogance, yes. isn't it? It's the height of arrogance. And the fact that the angelic realm, the one thing that I always was fascinated by as a new Christian is finding out that the angelic realm had free will to choose. That's right. Okay, so that blows Calvinism out of the water. Okay, that's a whole other different thing. All right, so so a third of the angels, the third of the angels follow him. They free willingly choose to follow him in the spiritual realm. And his pride is the root of all of that and i think lewis said it correctly it's a jealousy was it lewis was it you lewis that said that it's a jealousy i never connected the jealousy i connected the pride but the jealousy hits it right on the head i think that's exactly he's jealous of god he's jealous of of uh he's jealous of the trinity he's jealous of god's create creation who is mankind i think he has the pride just kind of welled up in him and created that jealousy issue. Definitely a problem. When you look at demons, though, of course, we've already acknowledged that demons, that word demon actually means knowledgeable or the intelligent one. So right. when we're looking at demons, people think, you know, they think Hollywood and they think all of that. Well, you know, they're going to show up to you not in a, a grotesque form. They're going to show up to you in a beautiful form. Of course. You know, and yeah, absolutely. Why not? Right. That's how they're going to draw you in. That's why God tells us not to mess with divination and sorcery. He does not want us to open that door to the spiritual well. He doesn't say that it's not possible. He said, don't do it. Yeah. Do not do it because you will get eaten up. <laughs> What's amazing about that, Sister Addie, is that it all hangs on our free will. Amen. Amen. Oh. That's exactly right. We can choose to yeah. open that door by, you know, you know, people use Ouija boards or what seances, whatever they want to do. They, yeah. you know, got these ghost hunters nowadays, and they're yeah. by them doing that, they're they're giving the green light to these beings yeah. to say, hey, come on in, you know, we're curious about you, you know, all yeah. this stuff. And uh, yeah, but you know, also uh, to your point, because you know, people are gonna ask, where do you find that a third of the angels went with Satan? Okay, oh. here, on Revelation chapter twelve, verse three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. This is Satan's uh, kingdom and Satan himself. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, the woman's Israel, the child is Jesus. Satan used her to try to kill the child and all that. We know that until it was caught up in the heaven at the resurrection ascension. Okay. But we, we see here that Satan drew, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. 
and cast them to the ground. Now, how did he do that? He can't do that with holy angels. He doesn't have the power to do that with holy angels. What that's talking about are the angels that he convinced to fall right. with him. Right. You know, exactly. that's what that is. So that's just to back up what you were saying, Sister Addy. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you look at and it's the same thing he did, the same influence he 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 uh, he uh, took with Eve in Genesis, the same influence. He, he talked her into it. What does he do? What is Satan's main goal is number one is to cause doubt of the gotcha. word of God, yeah. not just the not just the written word, but the living word, who is Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's right. to cause doubt in him. Now, if you look at, at demons, people have this misunderstanding of what demons are. And I could go on and on about that because I have a list of stuff. But demons are, they're sentient beings. They have feelings, emotions. They make decisions. They need a host. Yeah. Which, which goes into what you were saying, Chris. They, we have to free willingly open ourselves up yeah. to this yeah. demonic activity. And there's so much today that leads itself towards that. I mean, you know, you have all kinds of things. You have games that are that are based in sorcery. You have you have movies, you have books, you have uh, just pagan religions that are rooted in sorcery. All kind of venues that can op open people up to demonic activity. And they're not just an influence. They are non-physical spirit beings. Yeah. People need to understand this. You know, they need to understand that demons are independent thinking and they will do the will of their master, who is Satan. That's right. And I, I look, I, I believe that those, those very same demons are uh, fallen angels as well. Just just yes. the lesser I agree. hierarchy, uh, you know, yes. like, eight, you know, the principalities of powers and all of that. Exactly. I don't believe like some that demons are the disembodied spirits of a pre-Adamic race like uh <laughs> Gloria Copeland and uh, Kenneth uh, teach that doesn't make sense because why would God destroy the world in a flood and destroy the people only to let their spirits free to cause more havoc? They would be exactly. more dangerous as spirits being able to possess people, right? So th that wouldn't make sense, you know. It would not. Uh, the fallen angels, like you're saying, Sister Eddie, they're demons. They're demons. Satan's called uh, the devil, right? The deceiver, uh, <laughs> Satan, the adversary. Uh, but those other fallen angels that fell with him uh, are called demons, and they're lesser. Like Sister Addie said, they're lesser. A lot of they need to possess a body. Okay, uh, they wander around looking who they could sit there and possess. Who has an open door? And you see people walking around today, uh, Brother Lewis. You know, we can walk down the street and you see three different people talking to themselves, right? Um, yeah, I I used to kid uh, when when I used to teach in the, in the churches like. Uh, like going to the beach, you know, you go to the beach and you see women and, and I used to tell the, the women says, you know, it's okay to go to the beach, but what you need to do is pray that your husband, when he sees a woman like that, to see what's inside of her and he'll never look at another woman that way. Because these women have allowed themselves to be influenced or possessed and they are going out there to entice men um, to, to, to make them fall. And, and and this is all a a, a demon strategy. Uh, we know that demons don't look like what we see on 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 TV. They are still angels. They are still made. You know, they look like they um they disguise themselves uh, as an angel of light. Okay, so that's that's where their power lies, and that's why we need to be careful um, when we deal with stuff like that. As a Christian. And something appears in front of you, and you will know because you have the Holy Spirit in you, whether it's coming from God or not coming from God. Now, mo mo like I said, most of the time God will protect you from that, but you need to be careful. Like Sister Addy said, they are going around looking for someone, okay, so they can turn. And people, because as human beings, we want power. We want power over people. We want power to get money. And this is the reason they look to, to demons because they they promise them on this that they will have this on this earth. People aren't interested uh, power in heaven. They want it now, like uh, some preachers say. You know, they want everything now. Well, no, we will have everything, 
we just will have it in eternity in the presence of God. Right. You know, and again, uh, adding to what you said there, demons, you know, they need your free will, right? Yeah. They need your permission. They can't just make you do anything and whatever the deal is. They need you to say yes. And as for Christians, we need to test every spirit. I don't care if they appear in front of you, test them, you know, because they could be, like, as you said, deceiving us, you know, and they do transform into angels of light. Now, the, the, the transformation into angels of light is just them masquerading as like righteous individuals. They are brilliantly made beings as it is. They don't need to transform themselves that way. It's the righteous way. They, they're trying to make themselves righteous when secretly they're unrighteous. That's what that whole masquerade is about. And by the way, that's where we get the word hypocrite and actor from, you know, you know, right. the masquerading is somebody else kind of thing, you know, uh, sister Addy. I mean, you know, Lewis brings up a really good point. One of the weapons of these fallen beings is temptation. Yes. And unfortunately, and listen, I, you know, I'm not against women. I'm just saying the truth here. Unfortunately, Satan uses women to entice men 90% of the time. That's the way it goes. You, you wouldn't see men going to strip clubs if there weren't women there ready to entice. Or you wouldn't see, like we mentioned before, men going to nightclubs if they didn't know women were going to be there. It's, it's like Satan knows our weakness is women, right? And he knows this and he knows how to use uh, these women. And, and, the problem is with this, Sister Addy, and, and you know, I hope I don't get a lot of hate for this. The woman is the weaker vessel. Out of two weak vessels, you have the weaker one, right? You have the man who is also weak, but you have the weaker of the weak, which is the woman. And they're easily influenced spiritually and need to be protected more spiritually. Now, isn't that what, why Satan chose the woman? Because it was easier access for him? I... I, t I totally, and I'm a girl, so I can say yay and amen. I totally agree with what you just said, okay? I'm not offended by any which way of the imagination, all right? And I'm a former feminist, all right? And my, my, my hackles did not raise up. I'm good. Okay. So, so, yes, I totally agree with you. I think that Satan chose Eve because he knew that she would be an easier target. But he also knew... And this goes back to what you just said, Chris. He also knew if he got her, she would get yes. at him. Yes. We have a lot of influence over our husbands or men in general. You know, I, I, I know there's no such thing as a Jezebel spirit, but I think women can act like Jezebel. And, yes. I, and it has nothing to do, I said this on one of my programs, it has nothing to do with the beauty of a woman. It has to do with her attitude and her body language. Because yeah. I have seen women that are not necessarily considered attractive be very skillful at um, causing men to sin. So, yes, you are so right. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. So, please, sisters, do not send hate messages to Chris, okay? He <laughs> means well, and I'm backing up everything. So, here we go. But anyway, you, when you learn that, when you learn that as, you know, and look, I don't expect non-Christian women to understand this because they're living in their fallen flesh and they're being led by their fallen flesh. I was one of those women. I understand that getting, because I didn't get saved till I was 28. I was in the world for like 15 years, you know, but once you are a born again Bible believing Christian, one of the things that you need to do is you need to focus yourself and go, OK, I will not be a tool of Satan. I will not be an instrument of Satan and I will do whatever I can to not cause a brother or a sister to fall. And how do you do that? You do what, you, what we're doing right now. You study Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the serpent, the dragon, all of his names and his demons. You study them and you find out that they are seeking to find people that they can influence. And then through you, sisters, they can influence men who are supposed to be the leaders in well, the home. No, Sister Addie, yeah. I mean, this whole 
current woke movement that we see. Yes. Okay. Yes. A lot of that's being head up by women, you know, starting with, with the Me Too and all of this other stuff, uh, Black right. Lives Matter, all of this stuff, you know? And the thing is, a lot of women are there. Now, if they weren't influential, like you're saying, then there would be no movement. The men wouldn't follow, the men wouldn't go along. And it's sad because the men should be stronger than this, but they refuse or they're too scared to say, nah, sorry, we're not going to do that. You know, yeah. and Satan is, he's been very, uh, uh, you know, clever at this game. You know, again, listen, I, I'm a married man. Lewis, you're married. Sister Addie, you're married. And I'm sure Prentice, Sister Addie would take a bullet for you in a heartbeat. You know, and, and, and we, we would do anything for our wives. And Satan knows this. Yeah. And that's how he knows to influence the wife, because if the man is weak, if the husband is weak, he's going to follow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's and you know what? And just a little addendum on that. Even if he is a firm believer, we have ways about us that can still manipulate him into doing what we want. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, really and truly, really and truly, that can happen. Even if my if your husband is a solid Bible believing man, you can eventually break him. Yeah. So don't do it, sisters. Don't do it. Amen. Live your life in the light of Christ with your husband as your leader. As long as he follows Jesus Christ, you are good to go. Amen. All right. All right. So I'll I'll go ahead and read Ezekiel chapter twenty eight uh, from verses twelve to nineteen, I believe. If you guys want to look at that. Okay. Let me know if you guys when you guys are there. Okay, I got it. You there? Okay. You, Lewis, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Starting at verse 12, Ezekiel chapter 28. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, the, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thy, thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. That is a terrifying prophecy of what's going to happen to Satan. Now, a few things here. It starts off by talking about the king of Tyrus, a human being, right? Right. King of Tyrus, you know, existed years ago, and he was very powerful, and he, you know, but it seems like Tyrus got his wealth and power from Satan himself. Because Satan was the spirit behind him. Because the, it starts off by uh, talking about Tyrus. Then it says, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden. Eden was way lost when uh, Tyrus came on the scene. So Tyrus was not in Eden. This is the being that was behind Tyrus that was in Eden. So now Ezekiel is prophesying to Tyrus, but then at the same time prophesying to the spirit behind Tyrus. So it's like God is telling you, hey, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm talking to you. I'm not really talking to Tyrus. I'm talking to you. What do you guys say about that, uh, uh, Brother Lewis? 
Um, yeah, and we know that all empires, um, the Roman Empire, going back to the Mongol Empire, um, we, we know that uh, the Ottoman Empire uh, actually ruled uh, Jerusalem until 1911, uh, at the end of World War One. All these empires, uh, Satan was behind them all. And, and, and the reason he did this is actually to uh, wipe out the Jewish uh, people from the earth. Because if he could do that, he could prove that God was not really God. Uh, and and nowadays, you know, Christians are some Christians, and you know, okay, some Christians that are not knowledgeable, okay, think that they have replaced Israel, but they have not. God still has a plan for His people, Israel. We are we were grafted into the tree, okay, uh, because uh, Israel didn't listen. God has used us in the latter days uh, to spread the gospel. And if you see this, and it talks about uh, Lucifer when he was created, it, it's, it's, you know, imperfect in beauty. Uh, you know, it says so much about who he was. And, and this is part of the problem of pride. Um, you, you know, they call him the uh, anointed cherub. Uh, and and then he walked on the mountain of God. You know, he was there in the presence of God, and the angels were there too. And the one thing that it's actually, you know, you, you have to think about is if those uh, angels that follow Satan were also in heaven, what is it that he did to convince them to turn against God? And we go back to when he tried to tempt Jesus, and he let Jesus see everything that he could offer them. And and this is what he did. He lied. He didn't. He doesn't just lie to us. He lied to the angels, um, you know, and, and they rebel. And you know, he says, "I will let you down before kings." He's going to show the people that follow Satan what he's going to do to Satan, and they're going to behold this being that they thought was God or like God, and God is going to show them who the real God is. Amen, amen. And Sister Addie, again, you know, this is not talking about an ugly being here. Yeah. It's talking about a very beautiful being. And by the way, he has not lost that beauty. God didn't take that beauty away from him. He's still an attractive being, isn't he? Amen. And he certainly is. And that's that's the danger, Chris. You love to always quote, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. That is the danger of making everything so visual today you know we um what is i know i have it in here somewhere the scripture that talks about here it is here it is here it is first john first john where it speaks of uh first john 2 15 and 16 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him here's the 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 the, the verse that i was uh wanting to say 16 for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Who is the, who is the father of, the, of the, the prince of this world? It is Satan. The avenues of sin for mankind is what? The world, which is sin, our flesh, our fallen nature, and the devil. And he would never be able to do that if he was what has been um, portrayed, what he's been portrayed as in a society and in entertainment and in books. He would never draw people if he was that hideous uh, person, that hideous being that appears to people. His beauty, he uses to draw people in. And it's the same thing with his, his demons. They have the beauty that draws people in. And the, how can we tell the difference is we have to know God's word and we have to understand that we have to test the spirits, like you said before, Chris. Here is a, and I'm going to finish with this. Here is the, the just the, the contrast. And, and um, uh, Lewis brought this up. The greatest contrast to me is when you see set between a holy angel and Lucifer. Here's the contrast in um, Revelation 22, 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down 
to the to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things fell down did you mention that chris this the thus saith he unto me see thou do it not for i am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship god that's what he said on the contrast what lewis, uh, lewis brought up was what satan did in matthew 4 9 and 10 and he said saying unto him jesus all these things will i give unto you if thou will fall down and worship me there is not two greater greater contrasts of light and dark of holy and demonic than those two examples in my opinion amen amen, amen. and we're going to close out this uh session today but Next week, what I want to do is I want to highlight some of the ways Satan is uh, uh, attacking believers today. Not only believers, but deceiving the world, keeping people from seeing the truth, right? And uh, a lot of that, we've mentioned some of it today, like Hollywood, right? We've mentioned that, how they portray this ugly thing as being evil, while the beautiful thing is the one that's always saving the day. And we got to be very careful with that because, uh, you know, Satan, it's, it's like this. So you have Superman, okay? And then you have the Joker. The Joker looks overtly evil. I mean, you look at him and you're like, man, this guy, you're not fooling anybody. You're not a good guy. But then what if Superman was the evil one? Uh huh. You would never suspect that, right? It, it, it's because you, oh, he's the good guy. He's a handsome guy. He's saving the day all the time. Listen, that's how the Antichrist is going to come in, man. He's going to hey, come man. in laws and order and miracles and giving people free stuff, and people are going to say, hey, he's the Messiah. <laughs> so while Satan has you looking over here at the ugly, you know, he's coming in from the back, <laughs> and you're not even seeing him coming. He's like the ultimate magician. Look over here while the trick is over here. <laughs> so, you know, we have to know our enemies. So next week, we're going to start with some of those tactics, through, mainly through entertainment, video games, movies, music. Things yeah. like that, television shows, Netflix. Oh my goodness, um, you know, Di Disney, Disney guys, come on, yeah. Need any more than that? Okay, um, so we're gonna go into some of those ways because these demons, these fallen angels, are still here. The 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 demons that came out of the the demoniac of Gadara that went into the pigs. Guess what? Those pigs died. They're still they here. <laughs> they're, they're still possessing people to this day that will allow them. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Uh, you know, we thank you guys for joining us on this episode. But before we go, we want to end with the gospel that saves. Sister Addie, what must a person do to be saved? Well, it's actually very simple, so simple that even a child or someone with a childlike mentality could understand it. You have to understand that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of scripture, to be more specific, is that savior. He uh, died, uh, buried, rose again, ascended once for all. He did everything for you. His death, burial, and resurrection is a gift. He took our sins so that we could take on his righteousness to, when we come to him as our savior. But you have to understand your need for a savior. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I believe in Jesus, but they will not recognize their need for him as a savior because they don't see themselves as a sinner so if you come to that place where you know you are totally undone without jesus christ your next step is to receive that free gift of salvation and you will be born again amen goosebumps man brother lewis uh like sister he said first we have to realize we're a sinner we we, we sin against god we cannot do anything to pay for those sins that we have committed only god can forgive uh, sins. So God came in the form of a man to take on our sins. Um, he took our place. And, and that's what people have to understand. Our place was at the cross to pay for our sins, but we couldn't. So Jesus did that for us. Um, and as simple as the, uh, uh, the, the thief on the cross, you know, he, he didn't have to do any works. He didn't have to uh, do anything. Uh, he simply had to believe. And like Sister Addy said, it's not just believing in Jesus, it's believing Jesus. Because Amen. a lot of people do that. 
So you have to believe in him according to what he says. And that's where you come to the word. And since we realized and we talked about our the powerful enemy that we have, we can only uh, fight him knowing the word, like Sister Eddie said. Um, put your faith in Jesus. And uh, you, you, you have no idea what your life is going to be like once you do that. People don't, you can't see it. And, and we can't explain it to you. But you, your, your life will just change completely. Amen. You know what? Uh, that life that's going to be changed, we don't see it yet either, right? We, we, we have no idea. We're like the caterpillar before it becomes a butterfly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're in that chrysalis stage right now. We're just yeah. getting ready to be transformed. But the moment we emerge, we're going to be completely different uh, creatures. Still the same makeup, but different creatures, right? Like the caterpillar cannot fly before it becomes a butterfly. It'll leap to its death if it tries, right? It's weak. It's slow, right? But the butterfly comes out, same creature, but different form. And it, it's flying around, zipping around. It's moving like it never moved before. You know, it, if you look at a, a butterfly and a caterpillar side by side, you say, oh yeah, there's two different, two different insects right there. They're not the same, but no, that's how we're going to be when we get glorified. And this is why we want you guys to put your faith in Christ now. This life, listen, if Satan has a better deal for you, like, like brother, the late Dave Hunt used to say, if Satan has a better deal for you, then take it. Then take it. But he doesn't. That's the point. He, he offers you wealth and riches here, now. He offers you power right now. But how long do you think you're going to live on this planet? Think about it maybe 80, 90, maybe 100 years. Then after that, you die. Then what happens to all the power and the riches and everything that you gain? And now you have an eternity of torment. That's not a good deal. The better deal is to suffer temporarily in this life and enjoy riches forever in eternity with the Lord. That's the better deal, right? So we got to be patient right now on this current uh, earth, right? And this current system that we're living under, Satan's system. We got to be patient. And look at the light at the end of the tunnel, right? You put your faith in Christ and believe me, that it's a bright light for you, a bright future for you. There's no doubt about it. You're going to be excited for eternity. You're going to be surrounded with loved ones that genuinely are happy to see you and want what's best for you at all times. Some of the questions you won't have to ask anymore was, how was your day? No need to ask that question because you're going to know we had an awesome day. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. So we want you guys to please put your faith in Jesus Christ today, you don't have to do any works. Just humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I deserve everything that you have uh, concerning hell and judgment and wrath. I deserve that. I don't deserve anything good from you. But I'm asking you to please save me through Jesus Christ because I believe he is the only Savior. You say that, and like Sister Addie said, all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, and your future will be set. And Satan will have no more hold on you in any capacity, okay? So we hope you listen to that. We hope that you put your faith in the Lord. We hope you got excited about this teaching. And uh, join us for next week as we continue this. All right, my friends, as always, until next time, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless. God bless. Maranatha.